Enthusiasts, how are you doing? I hope you're all well. New Hoover. It's not about a new Hoover really, I just wanted to distract you from that. But in this video, we are going to be doing, so the video is split in two, it's mainly about sound deadening, sight, soundproofing, silent coat on Sprout. Uh, but also the start of the video, just for the first few minutes, it's just me finishing off some stone chipping and fitting the same seam strips. So I'm not gonna waffle on the intro this week, but I do need to do one thing, and that's a shout out, massive shout out for a regular viewer, really enjoys the channel, was absolutely gutted, he missed the live stream. So Dave Fielding, thanks for viewing. And I will try and do another live stream uh, soon, actually. I don't wanna do one every week, because it'll get a bit boring, but maybe once a fortnight, once a month. I'll try and give you a bit more notice this time and try and put something up on the community page so I can give you a bit of pre-warning. Last time was just sort of a bit of a practice. But yeah, let's get straight into it. Dave Fielding, thanks for viewing and catch up with you all soon. Cheers. My apologies, because I keep forgetting to film updates, but uh, at the moment we are just stone chipping the floor. So as you can see, the seal got paint, got sprayed when it was painted up to the floor line and the floor line needs doing it doesn't actually need stone chipping because it's been done in u-pole gravitex um, but obviously it's got gray primer on it and that's going to look horrible so i've just got some black stone chip and we'll just give it a light coat of black stone chip on the actual floor just to get rid of this gray Obviously, I need to mask it off nicely because I don't want to go get them black on my nicely painted seals. Right, that was one of those five minute jobs that turn into five hours. I obviously stone chipped the whole lot front to rear. I sprayed stone chip up inside the flutes as well. Obviously, I had to let that dry then. Uh, and then I fully waxed it inside and out. So obviously I haven't waxed the outside of the green bits, but I've sprayed wax up inside of each flute until it's running out. And then I've taken the bungs out inside the access the inner seals and those have all been waxed as well. So that should be pretty well protected now. So um, just got to get the other side done now. Right, we've made it around the passenger side. As you can see, I've got this well masked off because I found with the other side, that black stone chip just gets absolutely everywhere. It's even though you're trying to avoid getting overspray, I don't know, it's just like it's static or something. It just, it goes, I masked the seal up like this and somehow the spray paint got round there and onto the panel. Like I say, it's almost like it's, um, like powder coating where it's electrically charged, but it's not obviously. And I'm just getting ready to fit the seam strips back on now. So that's all masked off because it's all being waxed uh, front and rear. So the actual seams themselves are being waxed quite heavily. That's one of the things I might have done differently. Uh, Mark said to me, do you want me to paint the seam strips on the car? So do all the primer, get it all in primer then put the strips on, then paint the car in colour. Um, I think that probably would have been the better option. I wanted to do it like this because I wanted to give them some protection, but the problem it leaves is that now when I fit those strips, you, you're meant to put some like sealer in the top here to stop water getting down, which I'll probably be able to do, but I'm gonna have to really carefully sort of mask. I'll probably use Tiger Seal, I'll have to really carefully mask that off and then spray on there. Right, Mini Enthusiasts, how are you doing? We are gonna sound deaden the floor and we're gonna use a product called Silent Coat. I've never used it before. The video is not sponsored or anything like that. How hard can it be? I've watched a couple of YouTube videos and, um, well, you can do anything by watching a couple of YouTube videos, can't you? So we've got some bits laid out. 
I actually went halves and halves on with Mark on a pack of 40 because he needed some for the ERA, I needed some for this. We got 20 sheets each. I think Mark had a little bit more than 20 because he had some left over from kit. But 20 sheets in here should be plenty to do the whole floor, probably up the inner arches and maybe a bit on the rear seat squad because the original sound deadening has come off. <clears throat> so it's pretty straightforward, I think. A uh, few tools we need to do it. So uh, roller, heat gun. So you have to heat it up a little bit. It just becomes more pliable and it gets a bit tackier when you heat it up. So heater, a roller. Um, we've got a sharpie pen, a ruler for measuring out and some tin snips just for cutting it. I think you can use strong scissors or tin snips. But the first thing we're going to do, we just go over the floor where we're going to lay it and just go over it with some brake cleaner just to get off any well any wax or solvents or anything like that which might prevent it sticking nicely I'm not quite sure the best way to do this I guess we'll just start and then see how we get on really some people do every square inch they'll put it all over the roof they'll cover every last inch of the car and um, I think it might be a little bit wasteful. It's quite heavy stuff, so unless you're building a sound off car or something like that, or you want to hear a pin drop, maybe you do every square inch, but I don't think you specifically need to. I'm not sure how much better it is, is by covering every square inch, but when you see them demo it, they'll have one pad like that on a piece of metal probably twice the size of that and it's pretty effective so we're not going to do every square inch although you never know i might get bored and just do it just because i can Right, this is probably where I'm going to do it different to some people, just because my brain logic works a little bit different to other people sometimes. I'm not going to put silent coat over the top or fill in these channels with silent coat. Because what happens if the carpet ever gets wet or anything like that, as you'd have seen in the original sort of videos of Sprout where I took up this original sound deadening, it just traps water underneath here. And certainly looking at like these holes here underneath the cross beam, if I were to put silent coat down into there, all that would happen is I'd just have a water trap in the, in the middle for water to collect that wouldn't be able to get out. So it's a bit more fiddly, but I'm just going to silent coat the higher bits. Uh, and I'll have to do a bit of cutting and shaping. But like I say, you don't have to cover every square inch.
used eight sheets in total. I started out with 20 sheets. One sheet went in that door. One sheet went on the back there. So I've got 10 sheets left to do the whole of that other side. That's, that should only take eight sheets, uh, which will leave me a two sheet spare. So there's some bits up on the toe board I can do a little bit more. Um, yeah, and that'll probably be about it. I'll need a bigger piece for the inner wing on that side. But I'm not going to film doing the other side. I might show you once it's all done, but it's dead easy to apply. Uh, doing it my way probably takes twice as long because you're measuring out all the bits rather than just slapping it on and rolling it out. But like I say, there is, there is a bit of method in the madness. Right, chap. So we're progressing quite nicely. I'm almost finished now. I'm just doing bits and bobs up on the rear parcel shelf and I'm doing inside these rear door bins as well because they're a big metal surface that doesn't have any soundproofing on. Obviously the quarter panel does have but the door bins don't and I just thought this was I've only stuck a small piece inside the door bins because I don't have much left but I thought I'd show you what difference it makes. That's without it. That's with. And that has only got a small bit inside there. Right, so that's a silent coat, all done. And yeah, leave a comment down the bottom what you think of my method about uh, leaving the gaps for the channels. Like I say, there is a bit of method to my madness and that is so that water can't get trapped underneath this cross member or get underneath the silent coat itself. I did speak to Mark about it. Mark's just doing his ERA at the moment. Uh, and as he said, if if you get it stuck down really nicely, then there's no chance of water getting underneath it. But like I say, go back and watch the early episodes where I, where I was taking up the old soundproofing. Clearly that had water underneath it and it had oil underneath it as well. So that way that can't really happen. Um, it allows the silent coat to go a little bit further as well because you're not completely covering it. So I've done this whole car with 20 sheets. So um, I think about, let me think, 20, one went in the door, one's gone in the boot, one's gone on the rear shelf, probably one elsewhere. So maybe 16 sheets on the floor um, and I've tried to get everywhere. Like I say, you don't have to completely cover it. In fact, you, you know, if you do, there's no problem with doing that, but it does add weight to the vehicle. Uh, I think maybe the only downside of doing it like this is it gives you more edges where obviously that the edge of that will probably stick to the carpet where the, um, the black sort of, it's not bitumen, whatever it is, it might stick to the carpet or I might just put some plastic down first um but yeah that's the whole of the floor done um these rear quarters have soundproofing in them anyway i've done the rear seat the rear seat squab on the back because that's a big panel that doesn't have soundproofing i've done inside the rear door bins i think that's quite important because they were making quite a noise i've done the rear parcel shelf again it's a big panel um and i've done what was left over in the boot as well so i've done the spare wheel well something else rattling under there <laughs> have a look at that uh still slightly tinny but it certainly should help it and i guess if you were doing the whole car uh, i haven't done the roof because it was already on the roof I haven't done the bonnet purely because of aesthetics. I don't want it looking silver like that underneath when you lift the bonnet. So I probably will fit soundproofing, but it'll be more sort of the black original soundproofing. So it looks standard. And the same goes for inside the boot lid. But um, already when I shut the doors, it just sounds so much more solid. So, it sounds much better. 
so that's that thanks for watching um hope you enjoyed this update if you did please give it a thumbs up uh please consider subscribing if you don't subscribe and um yeah leave me a comment let me know what you think cheers big announcement i've tidied up the garage and i've been hunting high and low for these arches i thought i'd maybe put them in the back of vinnie in the boot pl they're not in there I've been up in the loft, trying to find them, scratching my head. I found them. They're up there. Yay!